this is a beautiful example of discoid lupus erythematosus, which was kindly shared with me by Dr. Antonina Kalmakova of CSD Healthcare in Kiev. And it's really prototypical. So we'll have a look at this, the H and E, and see what features we can find. Well, at low power magnification, you can see there's quite a marked scale, which would uh, correspond clinically to the scaling that one typically sees in discoid lupus erythematosus. It's worth noting that discoid refers to coin-sized and uh, at least the initial lesions in discoid lupus which uh, most often are localized and particularly affect the, the head and neck region. They may, affect, they may also affect the scalp, giving rise to uh, scarring alopecia. Now, uh, we'll look at this in slightly higher magnification. And, uh, gosh, that's about as perfect uh, a feel as you could ask for right here. There's hyperkeratosis, as you see there. And in this case, there's also parakeratosis, which is not uncommon in lupus. Now, the, the um, prototypical changes are best seen in this field. We'll look at this at slightly higher magnification. And here we, we can see interface dermatitis with basal cell hydropic degeneration. And uh, also, rather nicely, the, the superficial dermis is absolutely full of mucin. And I'll show you a mucin stain a little bit la later on. I beg your pardon, we've gone to too high a magnification. Um, you can actually see it quite nicely. There's abundant mucin uh, separating the collagen fibers. And this is obviously uh, extremely typical of lupus uh, and helps distinguish from lupus from some of it uh, its differential diagnosis particular in a field like this you might uh, consider atrophic lichen planus as a, as a possibility or perhaps uh, uh, an atrophic lupus like drug reaction although it's worth noting there are no eosinophils in in, in this case and if we look at higher power again, there is a lovely, lovely lupus, a bit, epidermal atrophy, interface change, um, ectasia of the superficial vasculature, and uh, a very dense lymphohistiocytic infiltrate. I want just to go back to low power to see if we can see any any follicular plugging. No, in this particular uh, section, unfortunately, the hair follicles are not well displayed. But you can notice uh, a heavy perivascular superficial and deep infiltrate, which is something you expect to see in lupus. And uh, it's also periodnexal and typically involves the hair follicles. Uh, in which you do get very marked follicular plugging. And clinically, if you dare to raise the scale, you'll see that the uh, follicular plugs adhere to the undersurface of the, the scale, and this is called the carpet tack sign. Uh, although I don't think people do that very, very often. Now, if we look across here, you can see how like in plainness, uh, 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 an, an individual field could seem. Here we've got hyperkeratosis, irregular acanthosis with a sawtooth edge, so and hypergranulosis. So that field on its own could easily be like in plainness or a lichenoid drug reaction. But it's when we go come across here that we get the pathognomonic features. Um, so the other thing that I thought we'd just have a look at is the um, 
is the Alcyon Blue, which is here, and uh, it very nicely highlights the uh, the Mucin deposition. De so let's look at that in higher power, and um, it's surprising. I thought there'd be more Mucin in the um, in the superficial dermis, but I was obviously wrong. Uh, there is some, but when we go deeper, you can see there's lots and lots of mucin, which um, helps confirm a diagnosis of discoid lupus erythematosus. It's important to check whether the patient has only one or two lesions about the face, or, and if that's the case, uh, it's unlikely to do anything very much to harm the patient other than the cosmetic effects, but if the patient has widespread uh, so-called disseminated discoid lupus erythematosus involving uh, the trunk and the limbs, for example, then that would, um, that would increase the risk of the patient developing systemic features. And uh, I just wanted to have a look here where it's very oblique, so I, it looks as if the basement membrane is thickened there, but I, I think that's just an oblique cut. Um, basement membrane thickening is also a feature one often sees in, uh, in lupus, but I don't think that's particularly pronounced in this case. I'll just go back to the H&E to see uh, if I can find that anywhere. Um, so we'll just go to high, high power and check the basement membrane out. And uh, isn't that just so beautiful? Absolutely gorgeous. Ah, yes. Okay. So uh, if we go here, I just want to straighten the, the image. It drives me mad when they're not straight. That's perfect. And here uh, we can see this. that looks as if it's in the right vertical plane and the basement moment is very markedly thickened. So that's another feature. Uh, to distinguish discoid lupus from atrophic lichen planus, uh, one of the big clues is thickening of the basement membrane. Another obviously would be follicular plugging and mucin in the dermis would also point you towards lupus. So um, that's just a gorgeous case. And for those of you who are beginning their training in, um, in dermatopathology, I hope this has been of some use to you. I just was checking to see if there was anything extra that I hadn't pointed out, but I think not. So I hope this has been a, of interest and of some value. Uh, thank you very much for your attention.